In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning. As we gather to celebrate today, we remember during our liturgy, Allen Post. We ask God to be with us today and forgive all our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of our freedom and of our salvation, listen to the voice of our pleading and grant that those you have redeemed by the shedding of your son's blood may have life through you and under your protection rejoice forever unharmed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul came to Antioch in Pisidia, he said in the synagogue, my brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The inhabitants of Jerusalem and their leaders failed to recognize him, and by condemning him, they fulfilled the oracles of the prophets that are read Sabbath after Sabbath. Even though they found no grounds for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him put to death. And when they had accomplished all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are now his witnesses before the people. We ourselves are proclaiming this good news to you, that what God promised our fathers, he has brought to fulfillment for us, their children, by raising up Jesus, as it is written in the second Psalm. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. The word of the Lord. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for an inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. And now, O kings, give heed. Take warning, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice before him. With trembling, rejoice. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, <clears throat> Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
The Gospel of the Lord. If you're anything, uh, anyone like me, you would be a person who likes to have a routine. And I like to know day by day, week by week, month by month, what I'm doing, where I'm going. I usually have all my days planned out. And I could tell you in February where I'm going to be in September or October. But uh, something came along called the coronavirus and that threw my routine up in the air. And now I have no idea what's going on from day to day. I just take things one day at a time. And I can easily relate to all those who have had to postpone weddings, uh, postpone baptisms that were scheduled for the next coming weeks, uh, first communions that we've had to put on hold. So our lives are pretty much on hold because of this virus. Perhaps we feel uncomfortable because we're out of control. We're not sure where things are going, what we are doing, or what even is going to happen. And I think all of us can easily relate to Thomas in the gospel today. He said, Master, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? He had been with Jesus up to this point. Probably his life was pretty comfortable in the sense that he knew what was happening, what was going on. He heard and saw Jesus do the wonders and signs. Things were good, and he felt comfortable being with this person and with the others. But now Jesus is telling him that they're going, he's going away, his life's going to change, he's not sure what's going to happen, and he doesn't know where he's going. So we have a sense then that he's totally lost, very much like you and me at this point in our lives. But Jesus gives an answer to Thomas, gives an answer to you and me. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. And that's the bottom line. We need to put our faith and hope and trust in Jesus Christ. For without this faith, we would be just floundering out there. And even though our lives do seem a bit out of control, if we can trust in Jesus Christ, then that can make all the difference. We see how that faith and trust in the risen Lord made a difference in the lives of the early apostles and the disciples in, from readings of the Acts of the Apostles. For we hear about people coming to faith, people coming to an understanding of who Jesus is. Those men that were locked away for fear of what was going to happen to their lives are now out there proclaiming the good news. We know that Paul had a great conversion moment and becomes a person of faith and does the work of the gospel very eloquently as we hear in our first reading today. So faith is that ingredient that makes a difference in how we are handling our lives at this moment and for the future days ahead. So if things seem out of control, if our routines are not the way we would hope them to be, let us just listen to what Jesus tells us today. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. Faith makes all the difference. We lift our needs to our Heavenly Father, trusting that he will hear us. For all who lead the church, may the Lord grant them strength in guiding the church toward healing and sacramental transformation, we pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, may God give them courage and strength in seeking out justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. For those struggling with de depression, anxiety, or other mental health challenges, especially during this time of pandemic, may God's healing hand provide peace and recovery, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick, especially those suffering from the coronavirus, we remember Jim Fitzpatrick, Ted Masadi, Maria Hajduk, and Madeline Kennedy. May God bring them healing and peace, we pray to the Lord. 
for all those who have died, especially those who have lost their lives as a result of this virus. May they rest in eternal peace with all the angels and saints in heaven, we pray to the Lord. We offer these prayers to you, God of mercy, with thanks and praise. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accepting compassion, Lord, we pray the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we were nourished by the body and blood of your Son, 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, your spouse, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Miriam Therese, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And in honor of our Blessed Mother, we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. And have a good day, and thank you for joining us, and see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m.